Good morning, folks. Despite the top solar satellite being out of commission, the Proba 2 and GOES have stepped in to allow for space weather monitoring. You're not going to want to miss a beat as there's an uptick in solar flaring. A shockwave hit Earth's magnetic field overnight. We've got news, weather, and a quasi-response from Dr. Jeffrey Love on our earthquake challenge, so you just stay right there in your seat. We begin at the eastern limb of our star, where bright umbral magnetic fields of sunspots crest into view with a dark plasma filament dancing in to the north of them. They're going to provide an eruption threat to Earth here soon, but we don't need to wait. Goes SXI extremely on point for a flaring uptick as this is what it's really built for, solar flare flashes. They were not picky about which sunspot group they came from. Largest two were not facing Earth, however, and the only CME production does indeed appear to be off the limbs where it is highly unlikely to impact Earth's magnetic field. The flaring itself jumped up into M-class range, even if only for a moment. The sunspot situation got fun here under the heliocentric conjunction of Jupiter and Venus, and we've got magnetic instability and some solid size incoming with the active regions. Going to be a fun end of the week, I think. And folks, whenever we do get space weather impacts, one of the first places we look for trouble is the airlines. Maybe it's the interconnectedness or antiquated computer systems, but space weather just hates the airline industry. Pulling the solar wind from Discover and flipping the colors so it looks normal to you, the solar wind presented a clear shockwave a few hours ago, and while tame in physical characteristics, it spun round the magnetism completely. We've already got global instability returning here, and the worst disruption was over Europe where that delta problem is actually taking place. You may recall that this impact and in magnetic instability was expected across the space weather watching world due to the impact in coronal hole streams, and expected to continue. Anyway, folks, this paper is a year old, but it's relevant today, and it actually just hit Cornell's archive today, so let's give a nod to the tidal forcing of seismicity, especially when you use geomagnetism to detect it and even predict it, exactly like our disaster prediction app should be able to do in time. Anyway, just a quick nod as one of those authors is an observer, one of you. Quickly here, the top weather stories of the last day were tragedies in Mexico and Macedonia. Mexico, it was a mudslide off the departing tropical storm, and a deluge across the way claimed a number of lives after rushing waters rose five feet in just a few minutes. I've got Thor on slow motion here. One of the best reasons to be in the high desert is the visibility and the lightning strikes. Incredible. This is just about every day near sunset all around me. Anyway, let's get into the earthquake challenge with the world's top geophysicist. Well, folks, we got about the only response that we're going to get from Dr. Jeffrey Love on the Earthquake Challenge. He didn't send us an email, but he did respond to someone else. I won't show that email because there's an expectation of privacy there, but it indicated that he was no stranger to our claims or to space weather news. If he's emailing random citizens back, chances are he's not going to email us, so this is the best we'll get, and here are the highlights. First, he does not think he has made any challenge whatsoever, but alas, that is what publishing a paper is, planting your flag in the ground, especially in the way it was done and especially in the comments made to the media thereafter about the sun and earthquakes and about earthquake predictability. More importantly, though, he dismissed us by saying we've never predicted anything and that if we want him to pay attention, we're going to need to get published. Well, First of all, we absolutely have predicted quakes. First ever swing we took at OLR analysis was made on Twitter November 8, 2015, public time stamped, and 45 minutes later, 6.4 struck Sumatra. It takes about 5 to 8 hours to do these analyses. OLR is mostly about clouds and rain, but if you account for that, and the erupting volcanoes, and the space weather, and the recent seismic events, some strong anomalies just still do not fit the bill. That's what we're looking for. And just two days later, we saw it again, this time confining the watch to only the western coast of South America. And based on our nearly nine months of watching, we're even able to put a limit on the magnitude of the quake. You might remember two 6.9 struck Chile just that night. How about ten days later, when we weren't sure of what to make of these long-lasting anomalies over Central and South America, until two 7.6 magnitude earthquakes struck that region just a few days later. I did this for only about two weeks, but after three hits, took it to some of the right people, and they accused us of either faking publicly available Twitter timestamps, or they simply said doing this on Twitter doesn't count. I suppose we're supposed to publish Twitter predictions now. 
We didn't hack Twitter timestamps, and it's not like we made a hundred different predictions and deleted the wrong ones. We only made about seven or eight and got three solid hits. Anyway, this was eating my entire day, so we had to stop, but have gone back a number of times when things were more quiet, and it worked again. Just takes too long for one person to do it consistently. But hey, this location stuff is not even where we shine. That's in the timing aspect, and the sun tells us everything we need to know. Dr. Love, this we did get published already after a double dose of peer review. After a recommendation of publication and congratulations from the administration of earthquake science by Springer, what I understand to be a higher level administrative decision kept it out of that publication. Right now, China's got about 18 months head start on this stuff because of it. We took the reviewers' peer approval and praise, however, keeping our heads high and rolling into Dong Choi's new concepts in global tectonics. They actually gave me a harder run than Springer did in the review process, but it did make it into the public realm and has now even been cited by another peer-reviewed work. Now, Love might rightfully ask why I didn't go to the American Geophysical Union or the Journal of Atmospheric and Solar Terrestrial Physics. Well, Dr. Love, as I'm sure you know, there are restrictions about who can submit manuscripts to many of these journals, and I simply don't qualify. I don't qualify for Cornell's archive either. I'm not allowed to publish there unless we get a member of the field, and so we sent out over 300 emails to members of the field other than you, trying to get our ducks in a row before going to the summit. A few who read the work are now subscribers to our website, but were unwilling to put themselves on the line, and the rest, it was a barrage of explanations why our claims were wrong and impossible, and many of them sent me to Dr. Love's paper from 2013, which is not even about the polar or interplanetary magnetic fields. They didn't even read it. A common theme was that they'd be more open to joining this if we got published, so the journals want experts, and the experts want more publications. That's a very circular, clever, and convenient little standard you've set up for me, Dr. Love. As I roll through our other peer-reviewed work here and our two short research updates, which utterly confirm and even improve upon the veracity of the model, I'll note to Dr. Love that when he refers to his opponent in this matter, my name is Benjamin Ross Davidson, not Space Weather News. Man up, Jeffrey. It is one thing to ignore us, but to ignore our actual predictions and our published work while telling people over emails that we have not done those things, well, I don't know what that is, but it's not science. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.